Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jake Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there. This is like the weekend, right? A lot of people doing drafts this weekend. A lot of people doing drafts next weekend. And in order to get you guys as much help as I can, I'm going to throw another mock draft out there. This time we're going to be doing a PPR one. We did a standard one for all the standard leagues last week. Going PPR this week, trying to help everybody out and trying to get them out as quick as possible. Um, this is actually going to be video number four for the week. I'm going to try to hopefully do four next week. I may actually do like a live Q&A video next week. If that's something you're interested in, hit me up down in the comment section below. Let me know. And uh, if a lot of people want to do that, I'll do it. No problem here. Uh, but, hey, before we get started, real quick, make sure you guys go check out that Rotoballer channel. The live shows are coming on Sundays just before uh, week one from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be live on all the major social networks. Uh, just trying to get you guys last-minute lineup advice. So make sure you go to the Rotoballer channel after this video. Uh, sign up uh, there, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, be ready to go for week one. But right now, let's get into a mock draft, a little PPR action. Got it set up right now for a 12-team PPR, drafting from the ninth position, snake-style draft. Just going to do a standard type of roster here, just so I can get you guys the information on the players as we're going through. One quarterback, two running back, two wide receivers, a tight end, one flex, a defense kicker, and six bench spots. Got it queued up here for the composite ADP using the Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard, just so I can have a little bit more time to talk you guys through these picks. Um, I want to make sure that I don't just hurry up because there's a, a clock ticking in my ear. Uh, so if you haven't used this before, just a quick run through. You got what round, what pick number you are. These are the, the players who have been picked, and then your roster is over here on the right. The ones who show up in the middle of the screen are your suggested players. That's the expert consensus ranking. doesn't mean you have to follow it. Uh, I mean, it's it's basically just there to say that out of all the players who are left, these are the highest rated ones. But if you scroll down here and you click on the high drafted players, you can actually see the, uh, the list of players who are available. And I've said it probably to most of you guys in the comment section. I've said it to a lot of people this year. I don't care if it's PPR or if it's standard. I'm shooting for as many running backs as I can get. Those of you who have drafted, I mean, you can see it. The, the running backs are just flying off the board. I had a question earlier today about how many running backs usually go within the first few rounds. Right now, based off of ADP, there's right around 25 running backs to go in the first four rounds. It gets thin, and it gets thin quick. So, like usual, I'm looking for a running back. Right now, the ones we got available, Melvin Gordon. We got Fantasy Ebola, Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey's somebody who's definitely moving up the ranks here quickly. His preseason performances are causing his value to absolutely skyrocket. Melvin Gordon, somebody I definitely like. think that he has a huge opportunity this year to – to not only touch the ball a lot, but he's in a great situation in, in Los Angeles. Dang, I almost said San Diego again. I'm never going to get over the San Diego Chargers. I should just call them the San Diego Chargers and move on. But, hey, anyway, Melvin Gordon, not a whole lot of competition for carries. He's going to get the goal line work. They have a solid defense in, in Los Angeles over the Chargers, as long as they quit getting hurt. It's like every preseason they're, they're losing some of their top defensive players. Same thing is kind of happening this year with their secondary. Hopefully they can stay healthy. If they stay healthy, they still have that awesome pass rush with Bosa and Ingram. Plenty of opportunity to keep their opponent's scores low. Melvin Gordon can have a lot of second-half production. I'm going to go ahead and queue up Melvin Gordon. Kareem Hunt, if you guys have watched the other videos, it's not that I don't like Kareem Hunt as a player. I just don't like him in the first round. I like all these other guys more than Kareem Hunt. There's just too many questions in Kansas City. You know, new uh, offensive coordinator, new quarterback added weapons. It's just all kinds of question marks. I'd rather take somebody who I, I know a little bit better, and that's going to be Melvin Gordon. Go ahead and take Melvin. There's another question I get asked a lot, too. What do I think about pairing teammates together? So right now you see Keenan Allen, who is an absolute PPR monster at the top of the, the page here, and he is. He's, he's a top 10 you know, wide receiver in a PPR format. But we already have somebody from the Chargers. Does that matter? Yes and no. There's certain exceptions. I mean, you, if you somebody gave you Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown, you would you know, probably take it. Keenan Allen and Melvin Gordon are not quite Le'Veon Bell and you know, Antonio Brown, but they're solid. But like I said earlier, the running backs are going to go. And we're about to you know, have a long wait for some players. So let's see who we have available. You got Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Devontae Freeman, Jarek McKinnon, Joe Mixon, Jordan Howard. Lots of options there. I mean, wide receivers very deep. I think even if we waited another round, maybe even two more rounds to get wide receivers, we can still get some PPR, you know, some solid PPR wide receivers. So right now I'm sticking with running back. 
So we got McCaffrey, Cook, Freeman, or McKinnon. And we're only going to get one of them because by the time it comes back to us, they're probably going to be gone. Now, McCaffrey has the huge upside in the passing game, but does he lose targets to DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel? You know, Greg Olson's healthier this year. It's possible. Looks great in preseason. Dalvin Cook is not playing a whole lot in preseason, but all the reports coming out are that he looks explosive, looks like the elite talent that he was, also in a great situation where he could get a lot of second-half running. But he has Latavius Murray, who may steal goal line carries at times, which is a little bit, you know, frustrating. Devontae Freeman still has Tevin Coleman to compete with. He's still going to get the bulk of the work. Uh, but he also has, you know, competition for carries. Jarek McKinnon, to me, is somebody who he's kind of like the wild card to me. I mean, they paid him a lot of money in San Francisco, and they paid him a lot of money to use him. Now, I know a lot of people are saying he can't stay healthy. He can't hold up all year long. Right now, he's not healthy. So it's kind of hard to – to take somebody right now if you're drafting who's currently injured. Yes, all reports are saying he's going to be fine for week one. We just don't know. So just for the sake of this mock draft, we're going to go ahead and queue up Christian McCaffrey. He's somebody who could get you close to 20 touches a game. I mean, they may not all be carries, but between targets and 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 carries, he, he could get you close to that 20, 20 a week mark. Also queue up Dalvin Cook right here. Like I said, another guy who's also going to get 20 carries a game. You know, the same type of, of situation with Gordon. In a lot of second half running, elite defense in Minnesota. They're going to have some leads. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play a little bit safer, and I'm going to go with Dalvin Cook since I think he's going to get more carries um, than Christian McCaffrey. And in order to score points in fantasy football, you've got to have touches. I want the most touches I can get. So let's see who we got now. Coming back in the third round, ninth pick. Now we have options. I mean, can we go three straight running backs? I get that question a lot. Yes, yes, you can. There's nothing wrong with three straight running backs, especially if there's somebody on the board worth grabbing. LaShawn McCoy, Alex Collins, Kenyon Drake, Lamar Miller, Jay Ajayi, Deion Lewis, and Royce Freeman. Now, anybody who's watching the preseason, anybody, they all see Royce Freeman. They see what he's doing, right? This kid is absolutely crazy. He's going to end up running away with the job in Denver. Devontae Booker is no competition for him. Great situation for Royce Freeman. This is where you guys got to pay attention a little bit in your draft, though. I'm going to pick right here at the third or at the ninth pick of the third round. I'm going to get a, a quicker pick coming back here in the fourth. So, looking at the draft board, I can see that you know Royce Freeman right now is one, two, three, four, five, six slots down the board. I don't think everybody's going to go running back, and if that's the case, that's possible that he falls to me in the fourth round. If that's the case, I'm going to look over here at wide receiver, see if there's somebody worth taking. You got Tyreek Hill, who I like Tyreek Hill, but I don't want him as my wide receiver one, similar to Kareem Hunt, just too many question marks in Kansas City. Amari Cooper, I mean, I call, you know, Kareem Hunt fantasy Ebola. Cooper is more like the flu. I mean, when you have it, you just feel like dying. You know what I mean? So I'm passing on Cooper. Demarius Thomas, he's somebody who is very, uh, I don't want to say safe, but he, he's a very safe plan of PPR league with the addition of Case Keenum. But we're trying to get Royce Freeman in the next round, so I don't want both Broncos. Jarvis Landry. What's Jarvis Landry known for? PPR. He's going to get a lot of catches. He's still going to get a ton of targets. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if it's different from Miami or what. He's going to see a lot of targets in Cleveland. He's just going to have the ability to go do more deeper routes than he did in Miami. He did a lot of 10-yard 10 route, 10 routes. You know, they got him the ball, but he wasn't racking up the yardage. He has a real opportunity for the yardage this year. I'm going to queue up Jarvis Landry and take him to be our wide receiver one in hopes that Royce Freeman will then fall. And as you can see, he's still a few picks down the list. Now, Alex Collins is also there. And this is where you have a decision, and this is where it depends on what your draft is. And pay attention to this whenever your draft is, whether it's this weekend, next weekend, whenever it is. Right now, is the job Royce Freeman's? Today, no, it's not. Not yet. Is it probably going to be? Yeah, probably, but we don't know that 100% sure. Alex Collins is a starter right now. We know, week one, he's going to be the starting running back for the Baltimore Ravens. So do we want to take the chance on somebody who may not have the job yet? Or do we want to take somebody who we know is going to have the job? And I know I talked up how much I love Royce Freeman, but that unknown is still there. So let's queue up Alex Collins and see what we got. 
So we got Melvin Gordon, Dalvin Cook, and Jarvis Landry looking for our third wide, or excuse me, our third running back, our flex play. Now, if we don't take Royce Freeman, he won't be there again. And I love Royce Freeman. Don't get this wrong, people. I will gladly take Royce Freeman. It's just a, it's a gamble. You know, I mean, you guys need to understand that he's not the, the week one starter yet. He could be, but he's not yet. But based off of upside alone and because it's a mock draft and I, I just want to see how things fall, let's go ahead and go with Royce Freeman right here in the fourth round and see what else we can come up with. So now we're in the fifth pick, the 57th overall. And let's see what we have available. We're still looking for a wide receiver too, a tight end and a quarterback for our starting lineup. And then we can start building our bench. We got uh, Deion Lewis, Mark Ingram, Tevin Coleman, Marshawn Lynch. Lynch is sneaky. Uh, Marvin Jones, he was a wide receiver, one in some formats last year. Crabtree, I have no interest in getting the crabs this year. Alshon Jeffrey is not healthy, currently on the, the, the pup list. There's a chance that he starts the season there. Emmanuel Sanders has looked great in the preseason. He could, you know, return to form if he can stay healthy. Sammy Watkins is a question mark. Jameson Crowder is a decent PPR option. Marquise Goodwin is somebody who's flying up the draft boards right now. We've talked about him a lot on this show. Don't sleep on Marquise Goodwin. So let's see what we got. Well, who do we have for tight end first? Scroll down to tight end. Tight end, we got Greg Olson still, Delaney Walker. Badly an injury, sounds like he's going to be okay. Evan Ingram just got a concussion. He should be fine, though. By the time the season starts, Kyle Rudolph, Trey Burton. I'm going to wait on tight end, and I'm going to wait on quarterback still. Let's try to see if we can just solidify our wide receivers and our running backs. So here we are, the ninth pick of the fifth round. We know we're going to get a, a pick coming up shorter. And Marshawn Lynch is somebody that I want. And if you ask me why did I want Marshawn Lynch, we just took Royce Freeman. If for any reason Royce is not the week one starter, we have Marshawn Lynch, who is a solid RB2 flex play, playing behind a top 10 offensive line in an, in an offense that's going to use him. So we want him. We just want to hope that nobody takes him. So we're going to go wide receiver here, and we're going to reach a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and preach these guys' names to you guys and then not take them myself. And it's a mock draft. Let's see how it turns out. So let's scroll down here and queue up Marquise Goodwin. Now another guy. He's a few names down the list. Watch your draft boards. Every site that you draft on is different. He may be a little bit farther down in some, and if he doesn't show up on the list right there on the screen when you're drafting, a lot of times players won't scroll down. They're going to look at the big names on the top. So if he's not, you kind of have to know your league, your league mates. So these are the two people that I want, right? I want Marshawn Lynch and I want Marquise Goodwin. Right now, Marshawn Lynch is a little bit higher up the list, so he may be seen before Marquise Goodwin, something you guys also want to look at. I'm going to go ahead, even though it's PPR, I'm looking for that solid flex play. Marshawn Lynch is somebody who will get you 15 to 20 touches a week between the three running back position. That gives us almost 60 touches, you know, to start every week, which is great. I don't care what the format is. So we're going Marshawn Lynch. And like we, we figured, Marquise Goodwin fell and is still there. So let's go ahead and take Marquise Goodwin now and see what we get coming up here. And now we can start looking at our quarterbacks and tight ends, see what we got available. Let's see. Tight end, Trey Burton. He's looked great in the preseason. Jordan Reed, an injury risk, but at this point in the draft, the risk is minimal. Jack Doyle. I worry about Eric Ebron because Eric Ebron just has a tendency to ruin things. David Njoku's looked great here in the preseason. George Kittle is a preseason favorite, battling that separated shoulder injury. Uh, quarterback, we got Stafford, Rivers, Garoppolo. I'd take any one of those three. Uh, they're all on high-powered passing offenses. They're going to have to throw the ball. Technically, if I had to guess, I would say Matthew Stafford and Jimmy G will throw more than Phillip Rivers just because that defense in, in Los Angeles is, is tougher than the ones of Detroit and San Francisco. Also, San Francisco has a really tough schedule against a lot of high-powered offenses. High-powered offenses, not elite defenses, lead to more throwing. You know, insert Jimmy G. Plus, we took Marquise Goodwin. It's a nice little stack to have with, with the two uh, San Francisco guys. Uh, Stafford, somebody else who's, who's going to throw for 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns. He does it almost every year. He's going to do it again. Um, tight end-wise, Trey Burton. You know, he's, he's a preseason guy right now that's getting a lot of hype. And Jordan Reed, to me, and I mentioned this in a previous episode, Jordan Reed, 
and I hate to say it because you guys are going to kill me down in the comment section, but just hear me out. Jordan Reed is a potential league winner, people. If he stays healthy, if he plays 12, 13 games, he could win you your fantasy football league. You just have to make sure you have a second tight end option. That's it. If he turns out, great. If he doesn't, he's the 81st overall pick. You didn't waste a you know, first, second, or third round pick on him like we'd have in, in years past. But the upside is huge. So let's go over here. Jordan Reed is queued up, and then I'll show you what we're going to do to handcuff him. Every once in a while in fantasy football, you've got to take a risk. If you don't take a risk and you just play it safe every single pick, don't be surprised if, you know, your weeks are mediocre from time to time. Now we need a quarterback, right? Once we get a quarterback, we've pretty much solidified our starting roster. And then we can start building our bench a little bit more. So we got Rivers and Jimmy G. We've already spoke about both of them. I'm going to queue up Jimmy G and Rivers both there now. Right now they're average ADP. Jimmy G's 101. Phillip Rivers 109. Now, like I said, I think Jimmy G could throw a little bit more just because they may be trailing in more games. We already have the Marquise Goodwin stack. Like stacking at least, you know, one wide receiver, one quarterback if possible. Let's go with Jimmy G. Still plenty of quarterbacks available for a second option also, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, let's go. Now that we already have Marshawn Lynch, so we already have our four running backs. Right now we only have two wide receivers, so we need to make up some ground on some wide receivers. You got Kenny Stills, Sterling Shepard, Kelvin Benjamin, Marquise Lee, Alan Hearns. As you can see, it's starting to get a little bit thin, but there's still people down here with value. Right, These two guys here right at the top, Kenny Stills and Sterling Shepard, are both guys that I would take on any one of my fantasy teams. All those targets that Jarvis Landry left behind, they got to go somewhere. There's not too many people out there trusting Devontae Parker. Any Amendola can't stay healthy. You know, they have a rookie tight end. Kenny Stills is going to see a big uptick in volume, and this is somebody who has about 800 yard to in seven to eight touchdown range of, of upside. That's great for the, the pick we're getting him at. We're getting him at the 105th overall pick, and we can get ourselves a solid, you know, flex play week in, week out if we need it. So right now, Kenny Stills um, and, and Sterling Shepard. Shepard, I think, is somebody who benefits because the defense will be keen on Barkley and Odell. Shepard's going to see a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's produced, you know, in the past. Both of these guys are solid options. Actually, with where we're sitting, I'm hoping that we can maybe get both of them. Um, may not. There may be somebody that takes them. So I want to take the safer of the two bets right now. And for me, the safest out of the two is going to be Sterling Shepard. I'm going to take Sterling Shepard here. And Kenny Stills didn't. And he didn't fall. But that's fine. Who did fall? We said we needed some Jordan Reed insurance, right? Pay attention to the draft. If somebody leaves you somebody, if somebody slips in the draft, I mean, his average ADP is 91 and we're at 112. Nobody's taking him. If people let people slide and you need it, don't worry about the position. Take what you need. Trey Burton is huge upside. Jordan Reed is an injury risk. This gives us good insurance on our bench. Let's take Trey Burton. Come back around and see what we got. Peyton Barber at the top of the list here. He looked great in the preseason. More than likely going to be the week one starter. Charles Sims just went on IR. So regardless, you know, if Rojo decides to, you know, take this job by the horns and actually go take it away from Peyton Barber, Peyton Barber is still going to have value. Now that Charles Sims is gone, Peyton Barber can kind of slide into that role. At the wide receiver spot, we got Matthews, Lockett, Meredith, um, Miller, Godwin, Ridley. Not a whole lot really there to choose from that stands out off the page. Tight end, uh, we're, we're set at. We already have two. Don't draft more than two tight ends unless you have to start more than one of them. Uh, quarterback, uh, we had to choose between Jimmy G and Phillip Rivers, and Phillip Rivers is still sitting there. If we wanted to, we could, you know, make sure that we were set there, and if anything happens to Jimmy G, still have another, you know, top 10 to 12 potential quarterback there. It depends on your league size, though. If, if your guys, if not everybody's drafting two quarterbacks, there's going to be, you know, options available. Uh, it all depends on, on, on your league mates and who they take. For this sake, though, we're just going to build a nice solid bench, solid team. Cue up Phillip Rivers. Rashard Matthews, I'm not interested in. He's supposed to be coming back from an injury. But, you know, Taewon Taylor and Corey Davis and everybody there in Tennessee, I can see them still taking a step forward. Uh, Tyler Lockett, somebody's got to catch some balls in Seattle, not named Doug Baldwin. Tyler Lockett has a great opportunity, but like I said, um, and here's something else we can do. You know, just thinking about it, I'm all about running backs, right? We need a week one uh, running back. No, we don't. 
but we could use a week one trade bargain. And if we can take Peyton Barber, have him go out and get a good week or two, we can turn around and sell him for great value and get a piece if we need something. If somebody's hurt by then, he's the next running back on the board. He would probably be gone before we pick again. And there's still plenty of quarterbacks to choose from. Switching things up. Let's go with Peyton Barber. And it comes back to us. Still worked. Phillip Rivers sitting right there at the top. Let's go ahead and take Phillip Rivers now. And we have our insurance for pretty much almost every position. We really need one more wide receiver. We'll look for a high upside wide receiver to fill out our bench. And then we can go for our defense and kicker. Now, look at what you have at wide receiver. Lockett, Miller, Godwin, Jackson, Miller, Dez. Hmm. A lot of questions about Dez. I have a really hard time drafting somebody who can't even make it on their NFL roster. There's no guarantee he finds it. I'm pretty sure he does end up on a roster somewhere. I just don't want to waste a spot on somebody that, as of right now, isn't even on a team. So we need a defense, a kicker, and one more wide receiver. Now, a lot of people will just wait to the last two rounds, take their kicker and defense, and move on. And I do that sometimes. Kickers, I will never take early because most of the time I just stream them, trying to find somebody who's kicking indoors so the weather doesn't play a factor. Defense is a little bit different. Look at your league scoring. If they reward defenses a lot, take a look at a defense. If there's not a wide receiver on this page that's going to jump out and change the, your, your team, go for it. Pick your defense a little early. you got the Vikings, Chargers, uh, Texans, Broncos. The Vikings have a great defense, one of the tops in football. We're going to go ahead and lock ourselves in a solid defense, but a round early. Now we need that last high upside wide receiver. Anthony Miller, huge talent. I don't trust Mitch Trubisky too much, um, especially with him and Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel, Tariq Cohen. Uh, Chris Godwin is somebody who's moving up the ranks in Tampa Bay. Um, not a huge fan of the Tampa Bay offense as a whole. Tyrell Williams is starting to lose his job to Mike Williams, which lowers his you know value. Des Bryant, I spoke about. Paul Richardson. I really think Jamison Crowder is the favorite target of Alex Smith in Washington. Paul Richardson will be big play dependent. D.D. Westbrook is talented, but has a lot of other young, talented receivers to fight with. Danny Amendola is not going to be healthy all year. So you can kind of see we're getting down to these points that have a lot of que- a lot of question marks. John Ross. John Ross could be a potential home run. He's going to be the number two in Cincinnati. He's the top ten potential, you know, coming out of the draft last year. Uh, huge upside. Taewon Taylor, somebody we talked about, you know, running away with things in Tennessee. He's looked great. We need somebody with upside. This guy is not going to start for us. So we need somebody with upside who to me has the most upside on this list, it's kind of a crapshoot. There's a few names. Christian Kirk is also a name I like in Arizona. Geronimo Allison could be the number two in an Aaron Rodgers-led offense. We just don't know yet. So everybody's got question marks, right? So this is how I usually settle it. I look for the best quarterback because if you think about it, I don't, I'm not really interested in somebody who has to depend on Ryan Tannehill. So that basically would cross off Danny Amendola. You try to, you know, eliminate people one at a time until you can, you know, narrow the, the decisions down and make your decision easier. Um, to me, I, I honestly think that if it's me, the highest upside here may be Anthony Miller. Like I said, I don't really trust uh, Mitch Trubisky. So let's, let's just go ahead and be a little bit bold. And this is actually a lot bold. Do I absolutely think Andy Dalton is elite? No, I don't. But he's also the number two option right now. And all these other guys may not even be their team's number two option in general. Geronimo Allison is the only other guy that I'm really thinking about. They got so many young wide receivers in Green Bay, though. It's just a question mark. So to me, it's between these two, Geronimo Allison and John Ross. Uh, We got Aaron Rodgers against Andy Dalton. Which one would you choose? Take your chances. Roll with an Aaron Rodgers-led offense. Hopefully Geronimo Allison can carve out something. If not, you know, you're wasting a 160th overall pick. Not that big of a deal. Go ahead and take Allison. Kicker territory. Scroll down here. Take the best kicker you can. Close the message there. You got Boswell, Prater, Crosby, Gould. Like I said, only thing I really care about with my kicker, I want somebody who kicks indoors. When the weather gets bad, I don't have to worry about it. Best kicker available that kicks indoors. Big leg, Matt Prater, Detroit Lions, taking him. And we'll see what score we get. You can't base a whole lot off the score. 
a 75 out of 100, but look at the team overall and tell me if you'd be happy with it. You got Jimmy G, Melvin Gordon, Dalvin Cook, Jarvis Landry, Marquise Goodwin, Jordan Reed, Royce Freeman, Marshawn Lynch, Sterling Shepard, Trey Burton, Peyton Barber, Phillip Rivers, Geronimo Allison, and then we have the Vikings uh, defense and Matt Prater as a kicker. Like I said, the scores are going to pop out. A lot of people are going to ding us on the Royce Freeman, but I don't think I'm the only one that's high on Royce Freeman. All depends when your draft is. All depends on what those depth charts say. But I want to know, hey, if you guys followed along and you didn't agree with the pick, this is a mock draft. This is not, you know, you know, the, this is the way you need to draft a 12-team PPR. This was an idea and how I break players down as I'm going through it. So if you would have done something separately or differently as we went along, by all means, share it down below in the comment section. I like to debate. I'm not trying to find a bunch of haters out there. Listen, it's a mock draft. It's a practice for a reason. Uh, if you guys have any questions, though, make sure you hit me up in the comment section. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Hopefully, this is a little bit of help for a PPR guy. Uh, they're late in the, uh, in the year. I know that we did not fill this thing with total PPR guys. And that may have boosted the score a little bit, but not everything is revolved around the PPR part of it. You know, we just need solid guys who are going to produce numbers. That's the most important thing. So hit me up down in the comment section. Let me know what you think, and we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Make sure you guys are liking, commenting, subscribing, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. 